Next to speak on this. And uh, Honorable Mutuse, you must be very ordered. This is a house of rules and order. Let's have the next speaker uh, making his comments on this. And these are people who have been waiting. And I want to tell the House that we have actually opened this debate. So we shall continue in the afternoon. So take your place and relax. Let's have the Honorable John Waweru. Honorable Speaker, it would be sacrilegious of me to start without thanking the committee. The work that has been done by the committee led by the Honorable Tongoyo and the committee in, in, in Senate has been such a thorough job. We agree that this committee, the joint committee, were actually the gatekeepers for this plenary as they were preparing this report, a report that has been prepared so well and so professionally that even as we are debating it, we are debating a complete report. Mr. Speaker, I do thank and congratulate the Joint Committee of Senate and the and, and National Assembly and at the National Assembly led by the Honorable Tongoyo. Mr. Speaker, this report is covering all the important bases. And I would not want to belabor points that have been made here by members. I'd like to say that if we are seeking for, for professionalism, we have been given proof of how professional this gentleman is. If we are looking for integrity, they have gone through the lengths, they've gone to the lengths to ensure that this man is untainted, fresh, and ready to serve the Republic as an officer of the law. If we are looking for experience, this is a gentleman who joined the force four decades ago, has had an experience of a lifetime in the force. So we are not placing an individual from outside to the top of the police uh, ranks, an individual who does not understand how the police uh, service operates. Mr. Speaker, as Mr. Kanja comes to office, his work is cut out for him. Mr. Speaker, there, is, there, is, there are a lot of issues that need to be addressed in the police service. Mr. Speaker, we are in a new world. We are talking about being in the fourth industrial revolution. We are talking at a time when we are talking about things like artificial intelligence, robotics, the internet of things, data analytics. The point I'm making here, Mr. Speaker, is that even criminals have improved their techniques of crime. The people who do not mean well for this country have also improved the techniques of crime, Mr. Speaker. We are talking about new avenues of crime. We are talking about cyber crime. We are talking about cyber attacks. The point I'm making here, Mr. Speaker, is that the old techniques of policing will not hack it in this day and age. We are in an era where technology becomes an important component of policing. And as I say that Mr. Kanja's work is cut out for him, social intelligence, robotics, the internet of things, data analytics. The point I'm making here, Mr. Speaker, is that even criminals have improved their techniques of crime. The people who do not mean well for this country have also improved the techniques of crime, Mr. Speaker. We are talking about new avenues of crime. We are talking about cyber crime. We are talking about cyber attacks. The point I'm making here, Mr. Speaker, is that the old techniques of policing will not hack it in this day and age. We are in an era where technology becomes an important component of policing. And as I say that Mr. Kanja's work is cut out for him, I mean that we might need to professionalize the police force by introducing new techniques, using available technology, the technology of today, to make sure that we incorporate it in policing. Mr. Speaker, the president of this republic made a pledge to the nation before he was elected. He said that the moment he is sworn in, that the moment he puts down the Bible, he shall disengage the police force and the police service from the office of the president. He even freed up the resources of the police so that the police are independent in the operation. Mr. Speaker, as Mr. Kanja comes to office, he might need to come with innovative ways of mobilizing resources to ensure that the police force is able to mobilize resources beyond that in which we are getting today so that the police force is able to do what is necessary. Mr. Speaker, 
when I say that Mr. Kanja's work is cut out for him, we also need to relook at past laws, decrees, and regulations that have been made. Mr. Speaker, the honorable members that you see in this house have their hands tied. These members know that the police are living in very bad conditions in their constituencies. But Mr. Speaker, there was a decree that was made that the NGCDF cannot construct police houses or police, uh, police lines in police stations, Mr. Speaker. Some of these decrees, we need to relook at them, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there was an arm of the police called the administration police. And the, the police were able to assist the national government uh, uh, officers in their work, Mr. Speaker. The moment the administration police were withdrawn from the chiefs, from the ACCs, from the DCCs, our national our NGAO officers were left exposed, Mr. Speaker. So when I say that Mr. Kanja's work is cut out, some of the work he has to do is to look at some of these existing policies, legislations, decrees, and regulations that have been made so that we can reverse them for the good of our republic and to improve the plight of our officers. Finally, Mr. Speaker, these, these new man at the helm has his cut, work cut out in terms of stakeholder engagement. We are told that the police is one of the boogeymen in this country, that it is a punching bag. The police must find a new way of engaging the different publics. The public that is the citizen, the public that is parliament, the public that is the, exec the executive. So Mr. Kanja will also have to be a diplomat as he does a, a diplomatic roadshow to be able to showcase a new face of the police to the different stakeholders. Mr. Speaker, it has been mentioned here that yes, Mr. Kanja does come from a region, and that is true, Mr. Speaker. We can never run away from that. But Mr. Speaker, this cannot be taken to be a charge on an individual. Everybody comes from a region. But even as we talk about regions, there are people like us. It is said that to come to this Nairobi, you either came by bus or you came by bath. Some of us came to Nairobi by bath. We belong in Nairobi. We, we, ha we may have traditional or heritage areas that we came from, but where we came from, we cannot fit there if we were all told to go back to our home areas. We have to have an understanding as we are having regional conversations that even in your region, you have very many people who live in diaspora. And when you heighten up the discussion about where each and every person comes from, us who are people who live in diaspora, where shall we be running to? We do not know any other homes, so Mr. Kanja is not presented to this house as a man from the Morima. He is represented to us as a professional with integrity who has experience and an officer who is able to serve as the IG of the National Police Service. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I do submit. Dr. Nikal. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. Mr. Speaker, I rise to support the report of the Joint Committee. Mr. Speaker, I must commend the Joint Committee for the work they have done. They have actually looked at all the relevant areas. They have looked at the processes that need to be taken into consideration, and they have found that those are correct. They have looked at the constitutional requirement, and they have confirmed that. And Mr. Speaker, on the experience and the other characters of Mr. Kanja, I do concur with what is in the report. I've interacted with this gentleman, and I think the committee is actually stating what is correct about him. Mr. So Speaker, there's only one issue that the committee has, uh, has, uh, has addressed, which I think has come out that we look at into the future, and I don't, it affects him. It was the issue of the retirement age of the Inspector General. It does look that the law as it is now is silent on that. The committee says it is exempt, but it really not exempt. What it says, at above the Deputy uh, Inspector General, uh, it is no crucial. It talks about below that, that they retired 60. 
Above that, it doesn't. And I think that is a lacuna in the law that we should look at in the future. Other than that, Mr. Speaker, I find that uh, Mr. Kanja can actually, from what is in the, in, the, in the committee, for the work he has done, from what members have said here, he actually fits the bill. And he really has to realize, Mr. Speaker, that the police is the most important unit in terms of internal security. You can have an army, you can have a strong army, but that does not really secure internal security. It is the police, the interaction with the civil society and with the people that really secures. And the police is extremely important in the criminal justice system. If they do not get out the investigations and, and the evidence properly, the criminal justice system will not uh, work. We also know that Mr. Kanja will face the challenges, and one of the challenges is actually the welfare of the police officers. We all know and all, all of us saying that even the accommodation is not correct. We are also aware that uh, there's a lot of homicide and the, even suicide amongst the police officers. This is a challenge. It indicates that there is some distress in their areas of work, the conditions of work, and I think that is something he will have to address. And so, Speaker, there is also a challenge of the perception of what the police like in, in terms of corruption. I think that is what he will have to address. There may be reality in it, and that will have to be addressed administratively and legally as required, and we know he's capable of that, but also the, uh, the, the perception. And another issue that really will change is the conduct of the police in relation to, hap, uh, to upholding the constitutional right during civil strife. This has not come out well. The way they have dealt with people during demonstrations that are legal, the use of what I'll call lethal force, the abductions that we have seen, we can't blame one man on this, but it is in the force. And now that when he takes up this job, I think it does think that he should really, uh, he should really address. And the general conduct of the police and the attitudes towards the law, the police should see themselves as a service, as friends of the people. If you're walking in the street and you see a policeman, the correct attitude would be, that is somebody I can go to for safety. Not that that is somebody that is likely to harm me. I know he's been in the service and as a person he has done well, but these are the challenges that he has to address. And therefore, we